Good morning, brothers and sisters, as we begin this new week, and as we again open the word of the Lord, shall we ask his guidance and his blessing as we seek to understand what is written before us and provided for us at this time in our history? Shall we pray? Gracious Father, we know that the end of all things is soon upon us and upon this world. We know, Father, that we have sinned. For this is ever before us. We also know, Father, that we are better to fall into hands, to your hands, than we are to fall into the hands of men. Help us now to understand that which is before us. Guide us so that that which we do for this which we seek, wisdom, knowledge, guidance from you may come to us, for it can only come from you. Direct us now, guide us in this path, help us so that which we do may bring glory to your name and to your character. For this, Father, we thank you. For this, we praise you now and always in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Now, last few days, we have been going back over Judges 2 and the application had been made that Judges 2 was a structure of the years 2001 to 2023. I, be I believe where we left off was that Sister Angela was making a comment and we were going to allow her some time to explain her comment. Is she here now? No. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Oh. oh maybe I'm she... on the phone. My laptop is down. It's frozen and I think I have to Okay, that's yeah. There she is. She's the phone. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm very frustrated about not being able to follow online because I'm visual. I can't see the graphs or anything. The I mean the charts, the diagrams yeah. guys made. Well, uh, <clears throat> Joshua. I'm, I mean Judges two thirteen. It says, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal or Baal and Ashtaroth. Well, those are male and female gods. So then I was thinking of 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 the uh, the the androgynous, you know, the androgeneity, the gay marriage thing. I think it was the U.S. Supreme Court that <clears throat> okayed gay, the so-called gay marriage <clears throat> on June 26, 2015, and uh, the way the church is going, you know, with Trans, tranny elders and what have you. Sorry, <clears throat> got a lot of phlegm this morning. And then I was looking at what's happening with the educational system right now, critical race theory. And and I looked at the covers of some of the so-called woke books that they're teaching children, even in kindergarten and elementary school. And it's it's Marxism. It's, it's totally anti-Christ, anti-God. And, you know, it's very upsetting to me, and I'm just thankful that all my kids are out of, out of school, but my grandkids are now having to face this. So I'm telling their parents who are not Christians, I'm saying it's best just to homeschool them as much as possible, you know. Um, not that they're going to listen to me, but I'm just explaining what's happening. I mean, a lot of them are not into these kind of weird things anyway. I have a son. He doesn't have any children, but he's totally against uh, you know, the gay lifestyle. I mean, he was almost raped by a gay man when he was only seven, and I'm sure he remembers that vividly. So I think the Lord allowed that to happen to 
keep him on the being keep him straight let's put it that way so yeah i mean the church and state of course the male is Baal representing the civil power and ashtaroth is the female deity um, a demon really um the, the the church you know the um false false worship so the significance of that being 2013 well, that's no. I'm not saying that was uh, 2013, but I, that's what Joe, uh, Judge, Judges 213 reminds me yeah. of. I know, but uh, can we connect it to 2013? Is what I'm. I would actually connect it explicitly to 2013. I mean, this this type of stuff has been going on for some time. It's just now that the the fruits of it are being very very blatant. I mean, that's yeah. getting to the point where parents are going to the uh, school boards and complaining about and asking all these books and this, this mm -hmm. uh, so-called education be withdrawn and replaced with, with at least moral education, even if it isn't Christian per se, at least yeah, no, moral. We're, yeah, so we're running with the premise that this is uh, really addressing this movement as well. So either this movement or, or things connected with the church, maybe. Um, but could we say that this movement is, is connected with 2013 as far as they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth? I really don't know. I mean, I came into the... I, I didn't even know they existed till. Yeah. Two, so. But in, in, that, in that history, we have um, the, the ministries that had joined Jeff that's when they're going to start the rebellion is in 2013. I mean, you could say it goes back to 2010 as well. Um, but but they were still trying to work with Jeff until 2013. Now, we didn't know about this until 2014. At least the average person in this movement didn't hear about it until Jamal's letter in 2014, where they condemned Jeff. I... And, I don't know any of that. I didn't yeah. meet him. I didn't read the letter. Yeah. Well, well, I was there, so I'm telling you that's what happened. <clears throat> so could we take the symbol, this is for everyone, of they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. Now, we also have two different groups or two different deities being named. Now, in 2013, so in 2012, we have Parminder with his prediction that the Sunday law is coming in 2014. And even though we didn't really understand what was happening until much later, that is, back in 2012, he's also uh, basically planning a takeover of the movement. And the, the situation that, that was always striking me when I became more aware of Parminder. Mm -hmm. in, especially in the application of Judges 2.12. Okay. When you look at Parminder's name, the translation of Parminder into English is God of Gods. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at this verse, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt. So in other words, by 2012, the God that was giving us the warning in 2001 was being forsaken because now we have this person named as God of gods that is choosing to prepare to attempt to take over the movement and did deceive many. Right, and he's he's connected with other people, and it's all secret. Yes. So we find out about this later. I mean, I knew about Tabo and that there was this secret email group and stuff that Tabo was a part of, but you know, I I never knew the extent of it um, that he was connected with uh, Tess's mom in Australia, and. And that, that he had gained sympathy when Jeff attacked him for his time setting. So he had sympathizers, but these sympathizers worked in secret. Right. And 
Now, and of course, if we go back to 2010, that's going to be the camp meeting in Oklahoma. Then that's where it's going to begin. So this generation that um, arose after them, right? Right. And knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. So these people hadn't really understood the movement. Um, many of these groups, they were focused mostly on the 2520 and to a large degree, things regarding Islam, but really when it came to Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, uh, that wasn't the main part of their message. And and they were even, uh, you know, as you go through that history, like I look at this 2010, 2011, um, 2012, 2013, I can see the progression that's in these verses uh, of what was happening in that rebellion within the movement. But, but that, that open rebellion, I mean, is manifest in 2013, though it's not generally known. Um, I mean, I can see it now looking back when Jamal was in Alberta. Um, he didn't come at the same time as Jeff, and that's because he didn't want to. That is, um, he had a message that was against Jeff, and he was contradicting what Jeff was teaching. Um, so it was set up that Jeff wouldn't be there when Jamal was there. Um, and so then 2014, of course, we found out what was actually happening. <clears throat> so, so I, so the question, just going back to Baal and Ashtoreth, if, if these represent a male and a female deity, um, does that represent these two different groups? Uh, Baal may be representing um, the the groups that leave in 2014 in Ashtoreth, uh, this female de deity, which is Parminder's movement. It's just a question. I'm not. Could very well be. I mean, the the application I looked at with this took me back to what we were seeing with Elijah. With the priests of Baal and the priests of the grove. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying is there's two different groups that are working. They're very different from each other. Um, but they're they're both in rebellion to the movement and they're part of the movement. And the, the situation with this, as we look at the situation with Elijah, we know that this was a threefold group against Elijah and against God. Mm -hmm. So we're given and we're shown in the open two of the three. And just like with Jezebel, one is hidden. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes so, sense. So we, we have to be very careful in this. I mean, I think we've identified it. I think we've identified points of this, but there's still a hidden portion that we have not yet addressed or not yet seen. Would that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as we come down here, <clears throat> looking again at this for 2014, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. The controversy over the book of Joel was coming to the fore in 2013 and was really being addressed in 2014. The fact that Jamal, Dario, Emiliano, and many others joined together 
and came to a point where they chose to oppose Jeff did not become completely evident for quite a while. But they were working much like Tabo and Parminder, and they were working in secret. Mm -hmm. Now we come to 2015 or 215. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Now, this is the time period where Elder Jeff was making it very clear about no public evangelization, evangelism. Mm -hmm. And there are many to this day that are not happy with the fact that he has said no public evangelism. They want to be out doing public evangelism because the church is doing public evangelism. Who is the leader of the church? In 2001, we're given a message. We're being shown that the angel of Revelation 18, the other angel, <clears throat> has come down on September 11, 2018. We know that the church in September of 2018, in their own printed material, had openly accepted spiritual formation. So who is the leader of the church today? Is it Christ? Negative. Well, it's supposed to be Christ. Okay. It's a false Christ, though. As, as we are aware from reading what Mrs. White had written, there was a group praying in the holy place. A portion of that group saw that Christ had arisen and gone into the most holy, and they followed him there. What happened to the remnant that remained bowed in the holy place? Didn't Satan step in front of them? Yes. And he breathed on them. And his breath contained no peace. Is that not correct? Or am I, am I remembering this wrong? Um, well, there was much power and light, but no love, joy, and peace, I believe, is what I remember. No sweet love, joy, and peace. Brothers and sisters, when there is no sweet love, joy, and peace, when there is discord, when there is casting out of others, when there is not examination of the presentations where you openly allow others to speak, where you are not willing to consider the points openly that others are making, then who is in charge? So the statements in early writings, page 55, Yes. So um, it says, uh, those who rose up with Jesus would send up their faith to him in the holiest and pray, my father, give us thy spirit. Then Jesus would breathe on them the Holy Ghost. In that breath was light, power, 
and much love, joy, and peace. I turned to look at the company who were still bowed before the throne. They did not know that Jesus had left it. Satan appeared to be by the throne, trying to carry on the work of God. I saw them look up to the throne and pray, Father, give us thy spirit. Satan would then breathe upon them an unholy influence. In it, there was light and much power, but no sweet love, joy, and peace. Satan's object was to keep them deceived and to draw back and deceive God's children. So they see a counterfeit is what they're seeing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But is this not what we've been seeing occurring within the movement since 2015? Mm -hmm. Somewhat, yes. So, so the influence of the Spirit, you know, when we look at the, the Holy Spirit, people often talk about the fruits of the Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. And we know the fruits of the Spirit are have to do with character. The gifts of the Spirit um, don't in any way demonstrate that somebody has the fruits of the Spirit. I agree. One of the things that I observed early on in my time within this movement, I was given a copy of the meetings that had gone on up in Newport, Washington, where Dario Taylor was presenting. Now, there were times that I could enjoy what Dario was saying. But in a conversation with another friend at that time, it was very difficult because there were so many voices, so many different manners in which presentations were being given that it was hard to make sense of what the thrust of the actual message was. Now, I don't know if, if many of you have ever watched Dario Taylor speak. I have. Okay. He, his, he studies, and he studies quite a bit, and I, I give him that. Mm -hmm. But when he was at Newport, Washington, he seemed to be overly nervous. Because he had to keep a towel with him at almost all times. I've never seen someone that, that perspired so much in the pulpit. It didn't have anything to do with the weather, did it? <laughs> no, not, not at that time in Newport. Okay. Newport is maybe 60 miles from the Canadian border. And in Washington, we know whether you're, you know, no matter what time of the year, that you're in the snow belt. So it's rather cool. There's not, um, yes, you can have some warm days, but not hugely. Yeah, I've only been up as high as Kent, and I know it got kind of humid up there while I was there. Well, Kent's on, Kent is about, let's say, 330 miles from where I'm at. And Kent is, you, you probably would have had to have gone up uh, to about Marysville, which would be about equivalent to, to Newport. So you were, you were probably a hundred, about a hundred miles south of, of the same area as, as where Newport would be, same latitude. Okay. What time of the year was it? I believe this was in the fall of the year. I'd have to look back. Okay. But it's just interesting, the perspiration. Oh yeah, it is. So Whether so they went out, whether so ever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them. 
and they were greatly distressed. When we look at this here again, the references that the translators had used were to read the entire chapter of Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, sister chapters that are dealing with the seven times. So we know that in this case, from examining the warnings of the seven times, that at that time, this was a curse that had fallen upon them because they had rejected the covenant and they had not completely and truly chosen to accept the law. If you're not accepting the law, what are you accepting? Are you not accepting idolatry? Well, that's, that's what we've concluded. Okay. Judges 2.16. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Uh, I, I got a question. Please. So I noticed back at 2.15, you actually related that to 2015? Yes. Yeah, that's what we've been doing in this study. So, so we noticed um, last week when we were looking at this, we can see that Judges 2 verse 1, uh, where the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum to the weepers, which is actually Bethel, the house of God. And we could, we could parallel this with 9-11 um, uh, in 2001. So when I started going through this, I started to see parallels between uh, the years and these chapter verses. numbers. Verses. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, chapter verse. Yeah. So I, that, when you did that, mention that, it, it, it kind of came out very clear. Um, mm. And then I started looking at it as you were as you were saying it, and it it, it seemed quite um, it, like it paralleled that year. Yeah. So whether, you know, I mean, some of these things are a little bit subjective. Yes. Some things happen from year to year. They kind of cover a period of time. But definitely you see the progression. Mm. And, and some of the verses are quite clearly referred to the year. So interesting perspective. Now, now 2016 uh, being raised up judges. Um, how would we apply this then? Do you, well. Because I, I shared what I thought last time, but I think we need to revisit part of this. But I mean, as I've looked at it in 2016, we begin to see more of Stephen's studies, more of your studies, more of Odilio's studies. Yeah, and well, in 2016, definitely, uh, Steve and I, uh, Stephen and I are at the School of the Prophets. Right. We're there as students, but we find some major um, things in biblical chronology that we are still learning from. So, so there. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you were there in uh, 2016. Yeah, Stephen and I were there at the School of the Prophets for, for three months. And. We're, that was in 2016. Yeah. Nevertheless. Now you were a student? You guys are students there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, did, I ended up doing, you know, a number of presentations, and Stephen did as well. At least, uh, you know, because not all of them were recorded because some of the presentations were part of our classes, and they didn't record the classes then. 
-hmm. But um, I did a major presentation on Sabbath. Well, I did two Sabbath sermons when I was there. But the one that I did on um, Ezekiel uh, was really instrumental oh. in understanding uh, July 18th. So, so that, and that was on, and that's an important date too. It was uh, July 23rd. Hey, Theodore, when was the um, when was it that year you had your tooth pull? You was down there. What, what are you asking? I didn't understand that. The year you was down there, you you had your teeth pull. When your tooth pull? Oh, my tooth pulled. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, was yeah, that was at the at the camp meeting in 2016. So that was later in the year. So I was there for the camp uh, meeting. I just, well. Yeah, I was just wondering because that's the year I was there with. There yeah. Too. Yeah. So so we were there for the school of the prophets, and then and then I was invited back to speak at the camp meeting. Um, okay. So then I, I, I did just wanted to get. I thought, I thought this was that was the year that you was had your tooth pulled. Yeah, so that's where I, I, I presented again on Ezekiel, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the, the camp meeting where my my uh, third presentation got moved from Wednesday to Friday because of my uh, my uh, tooth. And and they weren't going to have me speak on the day I got my tooth pulled out, which was Wednesday, Wednesday morning. And then. Um, uh, I spoke on Friday, but the recording didn't uh, uh, didn't survive, and so I had to do that recording again on the Sunday morning. Um, so, um, so it was kind of uh, uh, the and and that ended up being I got it here on my chart. Um, October fourteenth was the day. Um, that uh, uh, my recording wasn't uh, preserved. It, it was the memory card or whatever they had didn't work. They didn't have backups. So, and that's an important date. I'm not going to go into the chronology of that date. But, but the idea here that the Lord raised the, up judges, um, it definitely would relate to um, because in the movement. I mean, I was there in 2014. Um, but not my message wasn't received. And in 2015, there was all this opposition. And early in 2016, um, which I gave an account of that before, where I had the meeting with Tabo, uh, Kelly, Kelly Ross, and Jeff. Um, and uh, uh, Tabo was really upset with me because of an email that I had sent Jeff, that Jeff had required, requested of me to... Uh, give an account of Tavo's character. So I just used examples of the things that had happened uh, when Tavo lived with me. And then Jeff sent an email to Tavo with all the adjectives I used. Um, and uh, so Tavo was really upset with me. And then because of that meeting, uh, Jeff and I had another meeting um, where I went to the hotel where before he flew out, because this was in the spring. And then he invited Heidi and I to the School of the Prophets. So, so in 2016, at least, the message is given, being given information that is going to uh, deliver them out of the hands of those that spoiled them. That's what I see with 2016. It's not so much the individuals, it's, it's me and Stephen or Dilly or anything like that. It has to do with the message that's being given. Now I'm intrigued on on a point, and then there's there's a couple of other things to bring up. But when I'm looking at this verse, why would there be a translation to nevertheless? What in the Hebrew? How would this be represented? Okay, well the Hebrew doesn't have a word nevertheless. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, it would just, it's its something that there, it's not really an added word. If I look at the Hebrew here, it should be a vav, I would think. I'm just guessing. Um, yeah, it's just a vav at the beginning. So so you have this word kum, 
uh, which means to rise, and it just has a vav. So a vav can be translated all different kind of ways. It's just a conjunction. Um, it can be translated and. Um, so yeah, so it's it's. Nevertheless, is just some. That's the way the translators are going to translate it. Um, okay. Right, because well, they could, and the Lord raised up judges. They could have done. So they could have said, "But the Lord raised up judges." Uh, but they like that nice compound word of never uh, less. Well, I'm, I guess what I'm looking at is that they are joining this since you're mm -hmm. stating this as being a conjunction. Mm -hmm. So even though they went out, whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. And the Lord raised up judges. Even though the movement had chosen to not regard Leviticus 26, mm -hmm. the curses, God in his mercy raised up judges, raised up those that would be able to properly place events onto a line which saved them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Mm -hmm. The more we look at these situations, the more we make these applications, the more we study to see what was occurring and what the translators had seen, the more I think it's going to become clear that this chapter is pivotal in our understanding of where we are and the message that we are to be giving. Mm -hmm. When we look at what the translators had placed for Judges 2.16, we come to Judges 3, verse 9. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And then we have Judges 10, 15. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, we have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. Is this not the condition and the point where we find ourselves today? The only way that we're going to come into a unity is that we are going to need to be like Daniel, like the apostles, like what the children of Israel have seen of themselves here. That we have sinned. That we are better off in God's hands than we are in man's. Uh -huh. 1 Samuel 12, 11. And the Lord sent Jerubal, who we call Gideon, and uh -huh. Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your, emeries, your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe. And then we have the testimony of Acts 13, 20. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel, the prophet. Yeah, and of course, that's not, as Stevens pointed out uh, in his chronology studies, it's after about the space of 450 years, he gave unto them judges is how it should be translated. Right. Yeah. 
we're being shown a pattern. We're being shown that the children of Israel would choose to walk in their own path, would be chastised, would be abused, and then they would recognize that they were ever so much more safe and happy with God in charge than with their own desires in charge. Is this not where we find ourselves today? Mm -hmm. Now, a number of things, too, about these verses. So 216, yes. of course, we know that's a symbol of February 16th. Yes. Um, Samuel Snow's first letter. It shows up in our lines a number of times. Um, it's also six times six times six is 216. And, and then we see 217, and we know that 217 um, is the Battle of Raphia. It's July 21st. It's um, 31 times 7, right? So it's the cross. So, so these two verses um, here, even though they're representing 2016 and 2017, there's also symbols in, in, the, in those verses that tie to the things that are being understood at this time. So uh, 2017 is when Samuel Snow's letters come to light. Um, and, uh, but there are things in 2016 that connect to that, that is, I mean, there's a constant unfolding of light that occurs. I mean, without 2016, you don't have 2017 from a light point of view. And, and we see this, this constant progression as we're moving through these uh, verses of God sending judges and people rejecting the message, which is what I've experienced uh, in this movement. that getting people to believe this message, except once Jeff took a hold of it with the July 18th prediction, um, it, it was impossible. I mean, what happened in 2019 with Jeff um, taking this message that, that had been developing and, and running with it, uh, to me it was quite amazing because all through this time, I had opposition. But the thing is, the opposition towards me personally still continued in 2019, in spite of the fact that the movement was um, taking a message that, you know, primarily I had developed regarding July 18th. So, so the idea that there's judges or a message, people aren't really receiving the message. They're just following Jeff. But you're going to have the judge symbolically die in 2019 as well. Right. But in, in these situations, like we've got here. Yeah. Judges 217. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. What else is this, is this verse telling us about 2017? That the message is rejected. But it's also, not only is the message rejected, but they think that they're walking according to the commandments. They think that they're walking according to what God has laid out. Okay. Now here again, the translators come back. They come to Exodus 34, 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods and do sacrifice unto their gods, 
and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. And then we have Leviticus 17, 7. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. The children of Israel chose to make leagues with the nations round about them. The penultimate league that they made was the one with Rome. We were addressing some of this in the presentation on Thursday, but we also addressed some of this in the presentation yesterday. The church has chosen to make a league with Rome. No different than what the Jews made. But they are accepting spiritual formation. The Jews sought the league with Rome because they wished to be free of the Greek influence. But they'd already accepted so much of the Greek influence that it was permeating almost everything that they were doing, including their worship in the temple. So, you know, so one of the issues or problems or I don't really know what to, to how to characterize it but that it has always existed with this comparison of ancient Israel and their worship of other gods and placing this into a context of the present day now you have some people who are quite literalistic about it that is to them it's all about the the spiritual symbols in movies or in music or something like that and that's so they try to, try to take it, they try to fix it quite literally. Right. And then you have people who sort of, in this a more broader sense, you know, anything can be a god, you know, your car, your the way you dress, and so forth. But I think both of them kind of mix, miss the mark in that this really has to do with our worship, not 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 just the things that we value because that that's part of it and and not just because of the spiritual symbols of of other things uh, you know of other religions and so forth that you know we might unwittingly be uh using you know some people make a a, a big deal about you know if you you have a a star or something you know that's some kind of pagan symbol or whatever you know those types of things people are concerned about like the Jewish symbol of the uh, the hexagram, you know, that it's a satanic symbol or things like that. But anyway, the point is um, this really must relate to, if we're going to be applying it here, to the doctrines or the teachings. Because the judges are giving a message and the other gods are the other methods of study, the other ways of thinking that that are actually leading us away from god right we have no disagreement on that okay but but it, to me it it you know because it's something I, i've struggled with for a long time in trying to how to explain this you know this this parallel and, and i'm not diminishing you know the other two that they don't that they're, they're, they're irrelevant but I think this is the one that's more hidden to us. I mean, we might be much more aware that, you know, I put too much value in things or, or whatever, or, or especially if we are involved in the occult or something. But when it comes to our religious beliefs, we may not be aware of how much pride, how much um, of our own will is involved in what we we believe, what we choose to believe, and and how we look at others who think differently. 
And so this is this is not a an easy area. I mean, it's something that each, each of us, as we look at this, we could easily make the error of thinking, well, we have the truth and the other people are in error. Right. That that's, that's so much human nature. But we have to recognize that this is talking about this movement about all of us. And. And we have to be reformed. We have to we have to enter into a covenant with God. And and the idea is not so much what has happened in the past in this movement is we see these divisions arise and then we have a split. And it's pretty clear to me that God is not asking us to do that. He's asking this movement to come together. To have an upper room experience. So it's easy to cause a split. I mean, if you want to, it's much more difficult to bring about true Christian unity. Well, if we if we were to hearken back to the passage that we were discussing at the beginning of this meeting, from early writings, page fifty-five. Yeah we see that there is a division that occurs. Mm -hmm. Now, 55, we're dealing here with 5-5, five, five, which is a doubling, but we're also dealing with the symbols for the wise and the foolish virgins. Mm -hmm. One group praying before the altar, is aware that Christ has left and gone into the holiest of holies. Mm -hmm. One group is not. Both receive light. But only one receives sweet love, joy, and peace. Mm -hmm. Now, as we look at this, both groups believe that Christ is their leader. Mm -hmm. One is being led by Christ, the other is not. I think that's the, the picture that, that we are going to have before us at this point. Yes, we want unity. We desire the unity. We seek unity. But what are we to do when the hand of unity is being rejected? Well, you have to trust that God's still working things out. We have to have faith that God is yet working these out. Yeah. And, and we need patience. Okay. Right. You can't be rash about these types of things. Things take time. Working with people takes time. Doesn't it always? Yeah. Now, one of the next verses that the translators had used, Joshua 1.5. And well, that's relating to that's relating to two verse seventeen. It is or is that, is that two sixteen? Which verse is that? Because I can't going, it's going to be relating to verse eighteen. Oh, okay, verse eighteen. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. As we look at this in Judges 2.18, and when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge. Now, this verse from Joshua 1 verse 5, is that not 
a promise from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is he not capable to fulfill his word? Yes, he is. So in 2018, when the Lord raised them up judges, the Lord was with the judge. We go back to the prior application on 2016. Theodore, Stephen, Odilio are giving presentations that are making many uncomfortable because they don't understand. They're not taking the time to understand. And you have Parminder and Tess that are behind the scenes secretly looking to derail the work of the judges. So and we can see in 2018 then, uh, because I would say that then the Lord was with the judge. So you now have judges and then you have this singular. Right. Um, that this would be Jeff in 2018 supporting the message. Right. And yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Now, here again, mm. when we look at this, that the translators had combined. Genesis 6, 6. The number of man doubled. The second angel's message. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Consider this for a moment, that in 2018, that the Lord repented because of the groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. What are we being told? What is being said? Here are those that are choosing to work in secret, and yet there is a people that sincerely desire to know what the Lord wants of them and the message that the Lord wants them to give. The judge or Jeff is standing up all of his days to see this message go forward. Deuteronomy 32, 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And then we have Psalms 106, 44, and 45. Nevertheless, he regardeth their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered them for his what? Covenant. And repented according to the multitude of his mercies. Here again, the covenant that God has made is being recalled. We cannot afford to forsake the covenant for the covenant offers us blessings and curses. Curses if we choose to forsake it, blessings if we choose to adhere to it. All of this in 2018. 
2019. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and were corrupt more than their fathers in following after other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They let nothing fail of their own doings nor from their stubborn way. So, Jeremy, go ahead. So in 2018, I had made a prediction. So prior to Tess's November 9th prediction, I'd used the week of Christ and recognized that uh, 2019 lined up with the 12th day of the first month. And the 12th day of the first month is Judas's betrayal. And so in my first presentation of it, I marked April 8th, 2019, as Judas's betrayal. Now, that's going to be the day that Jeff retires. Right. And, and of course, everything's going to be handed over to uh, Bronwyn and Parminder. Of course, there's going to be all these negotiations and the timing of those things we know nothing about. But, but that would be the judge being dead. Right, that's where they placed it when he retired, and so so that that is that why they say he was dead? Yeah, he retired. They said he was dead, but it's okay. it's it's going to be April eighth, the very day that I predicted. In in using not that I predicted, but the week of Christ study predicted it. So I I recognized it and said that's going to be Judas's betrayal. But I had no idea what that would look like. And even after it happened, I didn't recognize it because it wasn't until September 7th that I really understood what had happened in that period of time. So once once Jeff stood, stood out of the way, a Parminder and all these other people, they were now working to undermine all of the work that that I had done, that Stephen had done that Adilio had done, and Stephen and Adilio are going to be in Germany, which is what you were going to refer to, what happened in Germany, Dwight. Right. So. Now I, but I have another question. Using the symbol of April 8th. Yeah. Jeff being out of the way. Mm-hmm. Is this not also symbolically entering into a league with the inhabitants of the land in turning this over to Parminder and Tess? Yeah, I mean, they don't realize what they're doing. They're being deceived. Right. Just as Joshua and the children of Israel were with the Gibeathites. Mm. So we come to Germany. Before Germany, I get this, this telephone call. We have a new leader. I referred to this in the past. It really rankled me. It made me pay more attention. Because we do not have a new leader. If we are truly the children of the book, we recognize that we have one leader and one leader alone. Amen. We have one leader. We have one judge. We have one savior. So they come to Germany. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and were corrupt more than their fathers in following after the God of gods to serve them and to bow down unto them, to bow down unto Tess. They let nothing fail of their own doings, nor from their stubborn 
way. We don't need the health message. In order for the woman to be saved, she is to put aside the health message, especially in the manner in which she dresses. We are to become just as the men. We are going to hold on to what the world sees because we want the freedom that is offered by the world. We don't want the freedom of the word of God. They let nothing fail of their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. And this stubborn way had permeated into the heart of the movement. This is why 219 for me is lining up so perfectly with 2019. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Now, when the judge was dead, we're giving a, a series of verses to consider. Judges 3.12. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. He strengthened one that was related to the children of Israel. For the children of Moab are the descendants of Lot by incest. Mm. Judges 4.1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And Judges 8.33. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Balaam and made Baal Bereth their God. All of these are fearful examples for us at this time. All of these are being interrelated with 2019. Now we come to 220, 2020, 2020. What is said if you have 2020 vision? You see clearly. Okay, exactly. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not the best vision, but it's uh, but you're able to see clearly. Yeah. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he said, Because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I will also not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. This portion is being presented after the death of Joshua. We come to 2020. We come to a point where we are to see clearly. We are seeing that this is combined with 2021. Our vision is to become clear as we study, as we compare the light that has shown before us, that is on the path behind us, as we are walking forward and not backward.
no, July 18th did not happen in the manner in which we believed it would happen. Yet, the message was given just as Jonah had given the message to Nineveh. We can see that clearly now, right? Mm -hmm. We are seeking that we are not in the situation where the Lord is angry with us. So in 2020, though, we have this prediction of July 18, 2020. Mm -hmm. Would we say the, the, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, against us, against this movement in 2020? Is that how we would understand it? Even though we're making that prediction there and we're doing what we were asked to do to warn Nashville. Okay, a small group is doing what the Lord asked to warn Nashville. What's the church doing at that same time? Yeah, but I don't think this is about the church, though. This is more about the movement. Okay. Yeah, it's paralleling the movement. Yeah, I don't think it has to do with the church. Was the movement in unity at that time? Well, it's no. not now. How could it have been then? Well, it definitely wasn't. So when we look at the message that we've been talking about, so even though Jeff is promoting July 18th, anybody watching those presentations knows that, that there's quite a resistance to it. Um, and in, in 2019, I'd gone down to Arkansas from the 7th to the 11th of November. Um, to meet Stephen and Odilio and, and to do some studying with them. And, you know, I was kind of surprised that when I came down there, all they had for me as a speaking spot was basically um, uh, the Sabbath school superintendent remarks. And I, I did get an afternoon spot as well after because it was requested, I believe, by um, uh, Toby. But... You know, I, I ended up doing presentations on the Sunday, so on the 10th of November, um, that were recorded but not released. And those those were basically me being grilled um, by Bronwyn um, and, uh, of course, Stephen and Odilio were there over, over the November 22, uh, 2018 prediction that Heidi and I had done. So... There is still this strong resistance to the message. And, you know, and as you as you know, you're not going to see me doing any online presentations through uh, the School of the Prophets in 2019 or in 2020 um, regarding July 18th. They're not going to be asking me to do any presentations. I think Stephen did did some, but uh, me personally, there was there was a lot of opposition to me. So, so I would say that you know, the movement wasn't united because it wasn't really united upon the message. They were still just following Jeff. Does this not parallel the situation that was happening in the Millerite time after October 22nd, 1844, where Miller was presented with the understanding of the Sabbath, but had others that were around him that dissuaded him from accepting this? Mm -hmm. So the point here is 2020-2021 becomes the time where 
the movement, just like the Millerites, fractures even further. Mm -hmm. And we begin to see that the movement will continue with others going in different directions, Sister Minor, and those that choose to think that they need to be in Israel. Is that not like what's happening right now where we need the reliance upon political mm -hmm. information rather than that of the word of the Lord? Again, just a distraction. Exactly. I see these two verses as being joined together. Mm. You cannot separate one from the other. Any thought on that? Definitely an A-B thing. Well, I mean, if you look at 19, 20, and 21, of course, these are all referring to the years in which we had these three dates. Mm. And so 21, um, so you're going to have this, this support for November 9th. We're going to have November 9th in 2019, July 18th, and then we have December 25th in 2021. So we're going to see that the... The nations are not going to be driven out. They're going to be left. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for a purpose, which we see in 22, that God may prove or test them. Okay. Now, when we're looking at this in 220 and 21, We come back to Judges 2.14. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Does 2014 typify 2020? Well, 21, that's the seven, it's a seven year period from 2014 to 2021. I understand, and, but 2021 can be separated. Yeah. So 2021 is also, I will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations, which Joshua left when he died. So, so that's the same thing as 2014. So I wouldn't put it as 2020. That'd be 2021. But it's being presented for us in verse 220. And the premise was these two could not be separated. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're connected. Okay. But just, it belongs to 2021, the period of time. So because they can't be just associated, it just makes sense that 21 would be the reference. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we come to this. Joshua 23, 16, a warning, a final warning of Joshua. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourself to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given you. Mm. Also, Joshua 23, 13. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish off this good land, which the Lord your God has given you. Mm. 
we have the covenant, we have the blessings and the curses being presented. Mm -hmm. And they are being brought back to our immediate vision based upon 20 and 21. Yeah, it I just adds it, weight. It, it adds a lot of weight to it. Mm -hmm. Now, we are coming down here to these two verses, the final verses of this chapter. We have two minutes remaining in our time today. Okay. So we're going to know that those represent 22 and 23. Right. And uh, the things that I shared at the beginning before this study apply to this. So we can bring the, pick that up again then tomorrow. Right. And address 22 and 23. Good. Now, is there any other thought or comment from what we have addressed today? Uh, just wow. Taking time to to accomplish, contemplate everything. Okay. And it does take a lot of time to contemplate this. I, I'll grant you yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. No. Well, this is what you get when you start digging. Yep. It keeps, yep. <laughs> you find one jewel and there's more down there. Okay. Anything else? Shall we then close with prayer? Amen. Gracious Father, direct us through this day. We thank you for this time that we have been able to spend together. We thank you for the guidance that you are providing. We thank you, Father, for your mercies. We see that you are merciful. We see that you will guide us. We know of our great need of you that we need truly to surrender all. To walk humbly before you in the path that you present before us. Guide us this day. Be with us so that that which is done will bring a revelation of your character to all of those with whom we come in contact. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this chastisement. For we are told we are to praise you in all things. And that we are better in your hands than in the hands of those round about us. Give us strength to this end. For this, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.